you can run multi-level maps with confidence in Albert Rodeo. Here's how. We'll show you how to create an empty scene, lay out your multi-level maps, and improve your scene's playability. Before you start, you'll need to open a room in your Albert Rodeo account, and you'll need to have uploaded some map images for your multi-level location. If you're running an encounter where there are two or more linked locations, perhaps multiple floors from a single building, you can speed up combat by putting those maps side by side in one scene. This also supports locations where you have multiple separate areas that characters can move between freely, even when that means splitting the party. Our Introduction to Scenes and Aligning a Map video show you how to import your map images and how to ensure that they are scaled and aligned with the scene's grid so that those images are ready for use in any scene. First, let's create an empty scene for our maps. Sometimes it's useful to create an empty scene without any map in it. For example, when you want to add multiple maps with hand-picked positioning relative to one another. To do this, open the Asset Manager and then click the Add button with the Scene tab active. Once in the Scene Importer, ensure that you're in the New tab. You can now give your scene a name and adjust its controls using the right-hand sidebar. Once your settings are to your liking, you can simply ignore the invitation to add a map image and instead create your new empty scene by clicking the Create button in the lower right corner. This empty scene will appear as a tile in your current collection, and you can either click on its Open button to load it into your room, or if you've already closed the Asset Manager, you can find this new empty scene in the Scenes tab in the dock and drag it into your room. Once it is loaded, you will see the infinite scene stretching in all directions with the grid style and the grid lines that you chose for it. This scene is ready to receive your multiple maps, as well as the other assets and information that you will add later. Next, let's lay out our multi-level maps. Here, in the Maps category, I can see my imported map assets that relate to different levels of this location. To add any asset to a scene, you can simply drag it from the dock. I can drag each one to a different position in the scene, and I can pan and zoom as needed to find space for each of them. Note that the first map placed in the scene will be the full screen focus when the scene loads. So perhaps consider which image corresponds to the location's entry level and place that one first. If you change your mind later, you can use a tool like the Outliner extension to drag the chosen entryway map to the bottom of the maps layer, making it the new full screen focus when the scene loads. By default, a map will be locked in position as soon as it is inserted in the scene to prevent anyone from accidentally moving, scaling or rotating it. To unlock a map so that you can adjust it, you'll first need to select it by double-clicking or by holding the control key while single-clicking on it, which bypasses its locked status. Once selected, you can toggle the padlock icon in the contextual toolbar to unlock this map. Move each map to a place that makes sense to you, and when you're happy with its location, you can lock it again to prevent it from being altered further. There is no fixed format for arranging multi-level maps, so lay them out in whatever positions make most sense to you. Now that your maps are in position, you can populate them with your prop, mount, character, attachment and note assets, plus any free text labels and drawn items that you want to add for your benefit or for the players. Having multiple levels of location laid out side by side like this gives great overview and access to all the assets simultaneously. Nothing is frustratingly hidden behind another asset that's currently in use. It also makes it easy to track party members, NPCs, and monsters on different levels at the same time. Finally, let's improve your scene's playability. If you have any creatures or objects that can be seen from two levels simultaneously, for example from the parapet level and from the rooftop, you can add that token on both of these levels, then attach them to one another so that they are linked as a pair using the Attach function in each token's overflow menu. Then, if either one is modified, the other one changes in tandem. But you can still isolate certain characteristics with the Constraints options. For example, hiding one of the pair won't hide the other.
In order to draw your player's attention to a specific area in the location, you can use the core Sync View feature to cause all their viewports to sync with what you currently have framed in your viewport, ensuring that they're seeing what you want them to see. With the core Fog of War system, you can limit what your players can see as they explore a multi-level location. which can then be brought alive with a dynamic fog extension, as shown in our dedicated tutorial video. There are a couple of other extensions in our web store that could be very useful in a multi-level scene. Firstly, the Portals extension allows you to define one-way and two-way portals between two items within your scene. So that when a player token enters a source portal, they are teleported to the destination and the player's viewport automatically recenters on their token's new position. Secondly, in preparing a multi-map scene, it's likely that you'll have more assets in play than a simpler scene, so the Outliner extension can be extremely useful in finding specific assets and changing their locked and visible state, or even the canvas layer they inhabit, either individually or in bulk. And that's all you need to arrange multiple maps in an empty scene and populate them with all the tokens and details needed for a complex multi-level encounter. To learn more about Albert Rodeo, subscribe on YouTube or click on another video to keep watching.